Okay, another day of trying to dial in our Saturn III Ultra. So let's take a look at what we're gonna print now. These are the boxes of calibration, which we're going to give a shot and see what happens. Uh, this should be kind of interesting because this prints out. And so you have a four millimeter box, a six and an eight, and the four will snap off and go inside the next one. This one will snap off and go inside this box. And then we also have like the, some little interesting things there that go from 0.1 millimeter. I guess it's an increase of 0.2 all the way to 0.28. So you got kind of like some rods and cone type of thing. And this is from J3D Tech, uh, who is a super smart guy. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna send this to JD3 boxes. All right, let's 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 do that. So, yeah, there it is. So it's gonna send this off. It's uploading to the printer. Everything is set. We have resin. This is starting off normal exposure, 2.3 seconds. Bottom exposure, I set that into 25 instead of 35, which was the default based off of a number of people who said that the bottom exposure time was way hot. So in other words, they do that so that no prints will fail, but I've seen people recommend there was a range of anywhere from 15 to 25. Uh, most were around 20, but I just wanted to try that 25 second mark and see what the print would be like and trying to get that off. We're going to kick this off and see what happens in 35 minutes and 8 seconds. Alrighty, our print is completed. There's not that much on the bottom of this build plate. And there we have the boxes of calibration. So we'll clean this up, print it off, and uh, yeah, see what we get. We'll go ahead and wash the print. Now, previously, my time for burn in was 35 seconds. That's what was default for the Saturn III Ultra. Trying to get prints off was incredibly hard. I had to take the build plate and actually run it under. Uh, hot water to get it to loosen up and then I could get the prints off you know the test prints off without them cracking cracking breaking so what we'll see is if this is a little oh yeah that is so, oh that is so much more nicer oh that was wonderful I mean that was like super easy so now there is our boxes and yeah, boxing and we're going to have to kind of dry this out. So let's continue drying this and then we'll cure it. Okay, so these are all dry. So we're going to go ahead and cure it for not long. We'll say like two to three minutes for miniature prints. And that's kind of small. So let's just do it for... 30 seconds, I guess. Sure. And then if there's too much wiggle in them, then what happens is there's, there is uh, under underexposure. And that came out really clean. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so there we have our test print. And I know that is lower, got off the small, but you can actually see the, uh, the pillars in there, which is the first two on the left. Um, you see one fell down. We don't have one on the first one. The second one fell down, but then we see the others are there. That is amazing. And you can kind of see the, uh, see the different levels. So, which is kind of amazing and you can look at that now the whole idea of this 
is to take these boxes off and the small box will go inside the next box and the next box will go inside the big box. If you want to find out where this information comes from, it's this guy here and this guy is the bomb. This is J3D Tech and he is the guy that came up with this boxes of calibration and you can also search for him beside YouTube but he also has a J3D tech guide of resin 3D printing where he talks about the calibration how to read it uh, settings to change and what to look for and so on and so forth this is just kind of kind of amazing and it goes so far into detail as far as dimensional accuracy of your prints and obviously in the, in the gray is so much better. It is just really, really good information. He also has one where it's a terminology of resin printing and that uh, is a very good document as well. So you can find those free online. So for example, there's those pillars and like my first one is gone. The second one kind of fell in half and then I have all the other ones. So now's the time to see if we can actually put the box inside of the box. And this is if you do not have calipers. So it's just kind of go through. And if you don't, if you have calipers, you can get a lot more accurate, but uh, we're just gonna do with the, this uh, no caliper option, which is basically seeing if the boxes fit inside the boxes. Okay, so end up that went off there fairly easy and does it fit inside the box oh no we'll see oh look at that kind of fits inside the box that is nice so now we'll take this box and we'll put it inside the bigger box and see if that fits. It's kind of a tight fit, but it does fit. I mean, it's tight, but it fits in there. So yeah, I am impressed. Some pillars that were printed. We have the first one here and you have two inside of each section. So on this very first one, on the first box, we don't have one. And then the second one in that box, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of laid over. So it printed, but as I was kind of blowing this out and draping it or dabbing, dabbing it with a terry cloth. I might have ripped it. I'm not sure. So I'll have to pay attention next time. But the rest of these came in. I mean, that is crazy wicked. J3D Tech, this is awesome. Thank you very much. I mean, this is really, really good. So I really appreciate this. So anyway, that's the calibration test. So I think what I found is 25 seconds for my burn-in layers and then my time of 2.3 uh, seems to be right on point. So again, what I started out with was the frozen calibration, uh, printing these things out, and which kind of gave me, gave me a ballpark. This was a 2.5 at 35 seconds for the burn-in. Um, and what I ended up going was with the 2.3 but very small details but as far as dimensional accuracy and, and all of those things uh, this seems to be way more accurate I mean, that just turned out nice like I said it's a, it's a little it's a little stiff to go in there and there's a little resistance but I mean it's not Obviously, it's not overexposed exposed, and blown out to the point of where those boxes don't fit inside each other. But yeah, an incredible test print. I like that. Now, obviously, I have my Nissan water washable resin dialed in. 
So now I know the steps to do this with other resins, which is kind of cool. Okay, so there you have it. We did the boxes of calibration from J3D Tech, which, wow. You know, first we did the frozen thing and was able to pick a time based off of that, but that doesn't really answer the question in regards to dimensional accuracy. And of course you can get really, really crazy accurate by using digital calipers to measure everything out. I mean, that's, that's insane. But since I don't have digital calipers, the option is to put the box inside a box inside a box. And if you can put them in and then pull them out and still pull them out, then your prints, you know, you've dialed in your printer. Now, obviously there's a ton of other things that you can do by reading the terminology uh, and the other documentation that J3D Tech has. Um, in regards to like lift speeds and all that. I'm not smart on that at all, but you can print things a little bit faster. But this is probably the best resource that I have found online for dialing in a printer and kind of answering some questions. And what I've seen most people get a printer is they ask, well, what is my settings for this resin or that resin? They, they don't want to take the time to learn how to do it so that they can dial in any type of resin and it doesn't matter. Um, you know, but maybe they're just going to use the same resin forever and ever, and, and maybe that's all they want to do, and that's absolutely fine. But with this and the resources that he has, it gives explanations of what things do, change settings, recommendations, so on and so forth. So it is really a great, great resource. So yeah, there we have it. Um, the boxes of calibration. So if you're wondering and you have gotten into resin printing, check out J3D Tech's uh, boxes of calibration and you can go you can go pretty deep with this stuff. And that's, this is just one part of a, how many, how many pages are in this document? There's 75 pages. So on his uh, J3D Tech's guide to resin printing, beginners in advance, and then he has another document, J3D Text Terminology Guide to Resin Printing. So that has some great information in it as well. And that's, that's not as many pages. Uh, it's only got 13 pages, but still some good information if you're just starting out with resin printing like me. So that's awesome. And then obviously his Guide to Resin Printing Beginners in Advanced. Uh, is a great, great resource. So if you're brand new, like I am to this, never printed anything in my life, FDM or resin, this will help you get on the right track. So thumbs up to J3D Tech. Dude is awesome. And definitely check him out on YouTube and subscribe to his page. I subscribed. I uh, wonder how many videos he's got and what he's done. He's uh, He's got like 79 videos. Talk about cleaning resin prints. He does unboxing and reviews. Uh, 12K printer. NFEP versus ACF film. Trouble removing supports. I mean, it looks like mastering support types and lychee. Becoming a Halloween expert in lychee. Uh, wow, this looks like a great, great resource. J3D Tech. So yeah it looks like good so anyway i just want to make this quick video and show you what's going on and how to dial in the printer with some excellent resources and information from people on the interwebs and the socials and uh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video peace